Well, Democratic Party primaries in Massachusetts took place today, and we've got mixed results. Like, overall, I feel disappointed, but I'm satisfied because we still got one really crucial victory. So I'm going to start off with the good news. Ed Markey, in his race against Joe Kennedy the third, just killed the dynasty. So a Kennedy has never lost a race in Massachusetts. This is the very first time a Kennedy has lost in this state, and he lost by a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> At the time I record this, Ed Marquis has 54.8% of the vote, whereas Joseph Kennedy III has 45.2% of the vote. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'd like to call an ass whooping. <laughs> I love this. That smug little elitist prick just lost to Ed Marquis. Uh, Nancy Pelosi came out to endorse Joseph Kennedy III. Beto O'Rourke came out to endorse Joseph Kennedy the third, and Joseph Kennedy the third lost. Seems like it's more important to get AOC's endorsement than it is to have Nancy Pelosi's endorsement. Hmm. Seems like the political winds are starting to change slowly but surely. Um, now, what I like about this race is that it forced Ed Markey to really be as progressive as he can possibly be. Like, he, unlike most incumbents, did not run towards the center. He actually leaned into his progressive record. Now, he doesn't have the most progressive record ever. In fact, I have some issues with him. Like, he voted for the Iraq War. He didn't endorse Bernie Sanders in 2016 or 2020. But he is a sponsor of the Green New Deal. He has been, you know, shifting towards supporting Medicare for All. And I believe him more than I believe... Joe Kennedy. Joe Kennedy doesn't even think that weed should be legal. So I love this. Um, what I will say is that it's time for the left officially to stop standing Ed Markey because he's not that great. He's definitely better than Joe Kennedy. Uh, but I think that a lot of his progressive bona fides that he was boasting about, you know, it was a little bit hyperbolic. Now, you know, we're going to hold him to that and make sure that he actually lives up to all of these progressive promises. But let me just say, if Joe Kennedy were able to win and beat Ed Markey, we would be in far worse situations. So I am really thankful that Ed Markey won. And again, I'm just, I'm really glad that Nancy Pelosi's preferred candidate did not win. Now, you see a little bit of salt online. Nate Silver of 538 posted, you know, incumbents win all of the time, so this isn't a victory for the left, but it kind of is. Like, without the left and this momentum, Ed Markey would have lost, because if you look at early polls from this state, Joe Kennedy was in the lead, but Ed Markey not only closed that gap, but ended up winning by a landslide, and in spite of the fact that he was the incumbent. Ed Markey is the one who was kind of the underdog in this race, even if he was the incumbent, because the establishment was a line behind Joe Kennedy. So, I mean, it's nice to have this victory, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take this victory. Now, there are two other races that I was paying really close attention to. Of course, the Alex Morris race going up against Richie Neal, who's the head of the House Ways and Means Committee, and then also Isan Leke. She was actually running for Joe Kennedy the third's vacant seat because he left his house seat, of course to run for the U.S. Senate. Let's get to those results. In the first congressional district of Massachusetts, Richard Neal unfortunately defeated Alex Morse 60.3% to 39.7% at the time I record this video. Results are still coming in, and I'm assuming that there are more mail-in ballots that are uh, left to be counted. However, it's a really big gap, and if he closes this, I'd be surprised, but this shows that, you know, if he comes back in two years, he can actually pull this off, as Cory Bush did. Now, when it comes to the 4th Congressional District, unfortunately, the individual who I was rooting for, Isan Leckie, came in 5th place. This is a really, really crowded field, and, you know, she didn't do too bad, considering, you know, she pulled in about 10% of the vote, but it looks like Jesse Mermel is going to be the one who uh, takes on this seat. I mean, this is a pretty blue-leaning district, so this will be the individual who most likely goes to Congress. Disappointing result, but not all hope is lost. Like, we got the Ed Markey victory. With Alex Morris, he's so close that if he came back in two years, as I stated earlier, I think he can pull this off. Isan Leckie, 
Um, I want to see more from her because I think she was a really inspiring and phenomenal candidate. Like, she is an immigrant from Morocco. I brought her on the program and was just blown away. Like, she's she's brilliant. So she's someone that I want to see in politics again. Um, so when it comes to the Alex Morris campaign, some people are saying the reason why he lost possibly is because of the uh, smear from Richie Neal. Like, you all know what I'm referring to. The homophobic smear that was... Uh, brought forward by College Democrats of Massachusetts, which the state Democratic Party in Massachusetts helped, you know, the, to coordinate and cover up. I don't necessarily know that that's the case because honestly, like from my perspective, I wasn't really following this race that closely. Like I knew of Alex Morris and supported his campaign, but that smear made me pay attention. Like that race in a way kind of catapulted Alex Morris into national prominence. Now the smear could have certainly hurt him because, I mean, he was rising in the polls. So, you know, that was a way to stop his momentum. But at the same time, you know, I don't know if it directly hurt him because when people found out about it, that and, you know, they felt sympathy for Alex Morris, they kind of rallied around him, at least I did, and a lot of other people that I know uh, who are following this did. So, you know, it, it backfired in a way to where I don't know that I can say definitively the smear is what led to him losing but it's just a matter of like when you're running for the first time, really, this is all about building your brand, building name recognition. And, you know, if Alex Morris came back, he could pull this off. Like, look at Cori Bush. She lost by, what, 20 points in 2018 and came back and defeated Lacey Clay two years later. So if Morris is losing by 11 points, then uh, I feel really good about his chances in a couple of years. Now, that sucks. I want him in Congress now because he is a phenomenal candidate very progressive, but, um, you know, you win some, you lose some, but maybe this is just going to be a pretty easy one we can, um, knock out in, uh, 2022, but at least, you know, Ed Markey won, and we just took out Joe Kennedy, and, you know, any, uh, I think, hope that he'd run for president one day, it's, it's kind of not going to be possible now if you end up losing your house seat to challenge someone and then lose that race. Like, that's a bad look. So at least that's one corporate Democrat who we kind of knocked out who'd be another, you know, smug, insufferable centrist like Pete Buttigieg. Although I, I kind of feel like, I don't know who's more insufferable between Pete Buttigieg and Joe Kennedy. Like, to me, they both irritate me for different reasons. Uh, but at least, you know, we don't have to deal with one of them for now. So that's good. So, I mean, all around... Not the result that I had hoped for, but still, you know, uh, I'm going to take this as a, a solid night. The Humanist Report is fake news. Mike only cares about Crazy Bernie and his wacky socialist ideas. Sad, very sad. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs>